So you are joining us today for authors and writers. We had two separate lanes at one time. We had the Ohio Writers Guild, and that was all about publishing uh, and getting your work out there, whether you're publishing a book or an ebook or a magazine article, anything, anything that you're publishing, we were talking about that. And then we had a whole separate bloggers group, which was all about writing. And what we've done uh, to help simplify my life, because I was doing so many of these, is that we've combined all of our authors and writers into one group. And so hopefully you're here because you love to write. And I'm going to just tell you a little bit about myself. I was a nail tech, believe it or not, for 25 years. Prior to that, I was in corporate America. Then I became a nail tech, ended up retiring with five beauty salons. And I was all about the real estate property. So as I uh, was going through my career of uh, the salon industry, I actually bought the buildings that my salons were in. And so once I retired, my five beauty salon, I actually gave them away. I gave away the salons. I gave the salon business away to wh whoever my top stylist was in the building. And then um, I, I let her name the salon. I just gave her the whole business, but I kept the real estate. And so then she just pays, just like you'd rent a storefront. She just rents the building from me and she runs the salon and um, I have rental income. So that was my retirement plan was to develop the real estate um, over that 25 years so that I could retire. So I am now retired. And then if any of you have ever known anything about the salon industry, you realize it is a crazy, 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 busy, 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 busy with, you know, just busyness everywhere. And I was afraid I'd get bored. So I started this academy, this online academy, um, first of all, because I wanted to give back and I didn't want to be bored in my retirement. And so now last count, we had 610 of you that are tapping in on a regular basis over all my different lanes. And uh, today's lane, again, is all about writing. So um, I'm going to share my screen in a little bit. But for now, I want to go over to Sandy. And I'm going to let Sandy tell you a little bit about who she is and what she does as my co-mod. Sandy. Oh, thank you very, very much. And good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Sandy Kachurik. I spent uh, 30 years or so in a classroom teaching high school English to students and realizing after the first year, not everybody was in there to become an author, <laughs> nor were they going to be an English teacher. They just wanted to pass the class. But still, nevertheless, after all those years, I loved it. I loved talking books, analyzing books, writing about books. And somewhere about the last 10 years, I wanted to change and become a professional author. So I thought, how hard can it be? I've been teaching this stuff forever. And whoa, surprise, surprise, you know, reading and analyzing a story and writing one's own story is quite the journey in itself. Uh, but I took it and started to change my resume from teachery type things to more writer uh, oriented, professional writer oriented things, and have done that for a while and got a couple books published, uh, so forth. And a few years ago, if you're at all familiar with the term Antioch College or Antioch University, it's quite nationwide known. And they used to have a uh, Antioch Writers Workshop in Yellow Springs, Ohio. And I don't live very far from Yellow Springs, Ohio, and I would go there. Well, after about 30 some years, not that I was there from the beginning, but after 30 some years, it 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 stopped. And um, a few years after that, a friend of mine said, hey, would you help me uh, put a, another writing workshop in Yellow Springs? And I said, sure. And after the first year of that, she realized she this wasn't something she wanted to do, and she offered it to me, and and I I took it. Uh, and since um, 2018, I helped her out, and from 2019 on, I have been the director of it, and I have adjusted the setup for it. It's kind of um, it's thematic, even though it's open to all authors and all writers and folks who are just beginning that path professionally, but yet have been writing and want to do more. Um, this year, I have three groups uh, I, and the my featured guests, I call them, have to stay the whole weekend and be accessible to the writers. We all share the same space 
And um, last year, there was a digital media uh, person. You might have caught her on the Today Show about a week or so ago talking about AI, and that's Jane Friedman. And another friend who talked combination of the business of writing and, of course, the craft of writing. And it was a, a, a good jam-packed weekend. This coming weekend, it's always around the first weekend in August, it's more mystery-oriented, but it's not mystery-exclusive. I have um, a, two authors who do a lot of writing in the mystery genre. One is Andrew Welsh Huggins, but he's also an AP journalist, and Jeffrey Marks, who's the publisher of Crippen and Landrew Publishing in Cincinnati, Ohio. So between the two of them, they're going to talk about revisions, the nuts and bolts of it, and talking about research, making research count. So you're not sort of spending so much time, although we love it, at, at um, we love the research, how to make it work for what you're writing. Plus the publisher, Jeffrey, is gonna talk about the query letter and a nonfiction book proposal. Plus I'm gonna have private critiques. So if you have the first 10 pages of your novel or story, you want critiqued by Andrew, he'd be happy to do it. It's a little extra fee but he'll do in-text comments and then sit down with you for up to 15 minutes at some point in time outside of our sessions and chat with you. Jeffrey is willing to do the same for a query letter. Now, query letter, one page, but it has to be the best one page of your life if you're going the traditional route and looking for an agent. So he's willing to critique those as well. Then we have fun events, I call them, on a Saturday evening, book sales. This year I'm offering every any registrant an opportunity to sell his, her, or their book. One book is a the space, this is the first time for everybody. So uh, I'm gauging my space and I think we could do it if we have everybody being able to sell one book. And I have a bookstore gal there from Yellow Springs and my featured guests will be selling their books as well. And then after that, it's open mic reading where my authors, uh, registrants, anybody can read up to this year, up to seven minutes of their wow. writing. Yeah, I know, I know. I mentioned to somebody else that I had open mic reading and they thought for sure it's just poets because poets are nice about five minutes. Oh, uh, writers are not so nice. They want more time. and Can't blame them. You, you know, good story. Even a chapter will take a lot longer than five minutes. So I'm giving them a big whopping seven. And But if they're shy, because some, some writers love the writing, but don't like the announcing of it, I have two uh, professional actors who love to do that for you and really do a good job. Some of my registrants just sign up to have just to hear their work being done. And a, Sandy, a little... that was my favorite part last year when oh, really? the actors were actually reading. So for any of you that have written works already, it is something to hear someone professionally, someone to yeah. read your work into an audience. It's it's really an awesome experience. Oh, yeah. One of my friends had her piece and she says, you know, I'm hoping it's funny. But when I heard the audience laughing, when these two guys, this guy, one of the two actors was reading her, his, her piece, she goes, oh, good, good. I knew I made it. It was going to be good. It was going to be good. And then I have a three hour session with the Ohio audiobook narrators. And four of them are going to come in and they're going to talk about what they do if you ask them, pay for them to narrate your book. What you can do if you want to narrate your book yourself, they're going to talk about what to look for in contracts. What's a good contract? What to maybe be suspicious about if you're um, getting a contract from somebody? And AI, they're growing um, well, excitement, maybe? Not so much for some people, but the growing, growing uh, industry of AI and how it's affecting them. Then they're going to take some folks uh, two to three minutes of their work and show them what they do to uh, prepare or how they look at a piece and how what goes into their work as audiobook narrators. The price also includes a 
lunch that's served. Uh, you get a menu on Saturday morning and then at lunchtime we stay in the same room. And you have, for me, that it's amazing how many writers chat a little more or people in general over food. So that's an opportunity maybe to sit next to the one of the featured guests and ask questions. And I've asked the audiobook narrators if they could come in a little early. They start at two. Our lunch is from twelve to one, so you uh, twelve to two, so you have an opportunity to visit and experience Yellow Springs as well. So it it's it's packed, but it's packed because I want the environment where you as a writer can ask the questions you need to ask whenever those questions pop up. Um, you know, synthesize this may be it for your summer, or this may be something you learned in a webinar and now you want to ask more about it. And the community building. Last year I had 50, 55 people in and um, they all felt more like, gosh, I couldn't believe there were 55 people here. So they were building their community as well, because that's my my tagline, cultivate your craft, build your writing business and community. So there's always a little bit of all those three going on there. So I have a website and uh, www.intothespringswritersworkshop.com, and I'll put it out there in the chat too. But do take a look at it. It's, it's amazing. I thought I saw a hand go up, but. Yeah, Sandy, thank you so much. Harmony had her hand up for a moment. Harmony, did you have a question I, for Sandy? She answered my question. I was going to ask for a link to be able to register. Yeah, she's going yeah. to put it uh, in the chat for us so that everyone uh, watch for that in the chat. And Sandy, make sure that you got clicked on that, that it goes out to everyone. That way, even the folks that are just listening uh, that are not a, up as a panelist can also see it. And um but she'll put her link in there. And if you've not been to a writer's workshop, it's there's there's tons of them. They're all around. You do have to kind of start searching them out. But if you want to be a writer or if you are a writer or if you you just want to hone your craft, uh, going to these writer's workshops is it's it's where your people are. Trust me. You want to go there and uh, rub some elbows and get to know some folks and it will make you a better writer. I remember back in the day in the salon industry, uh, I remember saying I never wanted to have like a salon at my house on the back porch, like a lot of ladies always dream of having, because I can't compare my work to, to somebody that's better than me. And you always want to get better. And it's the same with writing. You can, you can write in your, in your back room all day long and your writing may never get better because you really, you don't, you don't see somebody else and go, wow. That was so good. I should polish my writing a little more and and be a little better. So, um, being some good healthy competition, I think, is always good. And hearing your work read aloud is amazing. And so, just being in these workshops just makes uh, the the rising tide raises all the ships. I always say. And so, you want you want to surround yourself with some really good writers. So, I appreciate that. Sandy, thank you so much. I'm going to jump over to Sally for just a minute before we move on with Harmony. Uh, Sally, she's my other yes. co-host, Komad, in my uh, bloggers lane. And so, Sally, introduce yourself and tell the folks what you do. Hey, my name is Sally Sutter, and I own Mermaid Travel, which is a full-service travel agency. Um, my blog name is um, Embrace the Unexpected, because that's what you have to do throughout life um and, and especially it, when you're traveling <laughs> especially when you're traveling yes there's a lot of things to embrace when you're traveling but anyway i'm in a full service travel agency but i do uh, specialize in senior group trips senior as in senior citizen i <laughs> just like to clarify that because um i don't do high school seniors at all <laughs> so that's what i do i live very close to kathy um, and I'm sorry my camera isn't working today, but, but that's what I do. Sally, thank you so much. Uh, Sally is also kind of our in-house travel agent. So we do some tribe trips with the Academy. And so while we're talking about the Academy, I am going to share my screen and show everyone here where to get all the information. Now, the one thing I want to mention, and I see I've got a couple of folks on that are in some of my other lanes, other than the authors and writers lane. And here's what I want you all to know. Once you register through that registration link, it automatically registers you for all of our sessions. We meet every Monday at noon 
And so um, you'll have to, to follow along on the calendar, uh, my calendar of events to make sure that you tap into the calls that you want. So if some of you were here and saying, um, I thought this was a different topic, it could be because it's all the same registration link and it's just the dates that change. And you can find those on my calendar. So I am gonna share my screen um, and I'm gonna make it rather quick so that we can talk with Harmony. And so bear with me here just a moment, make sure that everybody can see my screen here. I gotta get to the home page. This is the home page of uh, the Academy, and this is where all the replays are kept. So if anybody is interested, uh, you can just go to Kathy. If you just Google Kathy Benner, the Academy will come up, but it's the Kathy Benner International Academy. And if you type that in and come across this uh, actual menu and you scroll down and here is where you find the authors and writers. And so you can click on that and here's where all the authors and writer stuff comes up. So here's where all the replays are to what we're doing today. Uh, we do have a course for authors and writers. We do have a course for the newbie bloggers. And then we've got our replays uh, here from last year or well, from 21 through 23. But all the brand new ones in 2024 are right here, front and center, right at the top. So with that, uh, if you go back to the home page of the website, you can scroll down and it will give you all the free meetups, it'll give you all the courses, it'll show you how to become a part of the tribe. Um, you can actually get some coaching one on one with me. Here are our freestyle living tribe trips. And again, Sally is our in house travel agent uh, to help you uh, maneuver where you want to stay. And then as it comes down here, one more here is the calendar of events. So if you click on the calendar, and this is what I want to show you, once you get to the calendar, you can click through and it shows you all the free stuff on the calendar. So here's today is the authors and writers. Next Monday is the real estate. The Monday after that is networking. So you can see where you can click through every Monday. Once you register, you get all of that. So I just wanted to show you where to find it. Um, and you can go to kathybenner.com or Kathy Benner International Academy. Both of those links are pointed right back to my homepage. So I am going to put that in the chat as well. And I'll do the kathybenner.com. That's the fast one. And that way you can find everything you're looking for. So today we want to talk to Harmony. This is amazing. I can't wait to hear a little bit more about what you do. Um, Harmony grew up in a variety of houses in a vast array of places from the mountains of Idaho to the lakes of Michigan, where she spent a year as a free spirit before returning to songwriting and on the way picked up a love of yoga. Okay, I think I want to hang out with you. Um, her debut, All the Pretty Houses, has received rave reviews for its insights into ambiguous grief and its relatable and thought-provoking take on mental illness. When Harmony isn't writing, she runs the foundation, the Caleb Field Foundation, which is, was inspired by her son, who took his life at the age of 24. Harmony, I'm so sorry. The foundation helps those suffering with a severe mental illness and works to close the gap between when a child is first diagnosed and receives treatment. And we'll have her put her link in the chat as well sometime before we get off the call. But in her spare time, she enjoys teaching her dogs, Bo and Ellie, new tricks, balancing a plethora of plates on her head and thinking about her next adventure. Harmony, welcome. Glad that you're here today. Um, Thank you for what having made you me. Yeah, what made you decide you wanted to write a biography? So I it kind of, as you mentioned, um, grew up a little all over the country. I always thought about writing something and then um, later in life, I was experiencing this feeling and I was like, what is this? And I happened to run across Pauline Boss, who coined the phrase ambiguous loss and realized not only is that a very relatable thing that people go through, rather that's, you know, having to give up a pet or, you know, your parents get divorced, that kind of thing. And I thought that there was a, a, a good thing theme there to write about that was really relatable for a lot of people. Wow. Um, well, what was the most difficult part about writing your book? Well, I'd say the, the first thing was, 
was really difficult was remembering details from 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, <laughs> so that was probably the first thing. And then the second thing was, um, how, how did you, how did you remember? I mean, what did you do to help bring back some of those memories? Because I think too about writing my story and I think, you know, I kind of, I, I remember all the high points, but you know, number one, I'm, I'm not sure that I remember all the details. And number two, I'm not sure that I want to go through the emotion of remembering all the details. How did you maneuver that? So to your point, that was also one of the difficult things was to kind of relive some of those uh, memories that weren't so great. And um, how I got to the, the, the places that I needed to go was kind of a long journey. Sometimes it was just me um, you know, doing some yoga and then kind of taking that moment to kind of think about where I was. And, and I would say remembering the feeling was what helped my memory in recreating those moments in the book is you really have to get back to that place. Um, and that was super difficult and sometimes really fun because I do write about, you know, how I managed to deal with my ambiguous loss or ambiguous grief, as I say in the book. And um, some of that was traveling or learning something new. So some of those memories were kind of fun. Uh, but yeah, getting back to some of those old memories uh, definitely took a lot of introspection um, and pictures. Pictures were really great because I could go back and kind of look at, oh, that's what I looked like back then. And what did that feel like? And that's what my family looked like, or that was a camping trip I had forgotten about, you know? So that was really okay. helpful to with photographs. I, I, I love talking with you about this. I, when I'm just looking at my screen on Zoom and I see everybody's faces and names, um, I know several that are on this call are thinking or, or in the process of writing uh, a biography uh, or a memoir. Um, put, in, put in the chat, for those of you that are listening, how many of you have thought about writing your story? Yeah, give me a yes in the chat. If you've thought about writing your story or if somebody has said, you need to write your story, your story. Yeah, Shelby says, kind of, yeah. Uh, Elise says, yes, yes. Oh, Elise, I didn't see that you were there. Let me jump down and get you up here. Um, so yeah, um, we, we're all, at some point, we all have interesting stories, all of us do. Uh, Linda says yes. Yeah, there's some folks. Sherry says yes. Uh, Judith says yes. Oh, yeah, we're getting a lot of yeses. Yeah, a lot of yeses there. So, uh, you know, it is something that we've thought about over time. And uh, but sometimes you just don't know where to start. So what was your beginning starting point? What did when you said, I'm going to do this? What was the first thing? Did you allow time to write? Did you start putting notes together? Well, what was the first thing you did when you said, I'm going to write my story? So um, once I knew that I wanted to write it, um, I I took about a year to kind of, I, I would think of things and put them in notes in my phone, uh, okay. along with, you know, various book titles and that kind of thing. And then the day that I sat down, I will say, I, I started writing, um, almost as, as a cathartic journal. I did not know exactly where everything was going to go. I knew this is where I was today. And so I started writing and I said, what do I, you know, what do I want to include? What direction do I want this to, to go? Uh, and that's kind of how I got started. It is terrifying. I will say to those of you who said, yes, I should, or I've been told I should write. Um, it's terrifying. Um, uh, in, many different ways, but it's also, as I mentioned, very cathartic to write a lot of that. I I love it. I love it. So did you, and again, we've got a lot of new writers on, in the group, and then we have some that are published. Um, uh, Sandy is published. Uh, I don't know who else in the group is published. Um, I know Sherry is published. I'm looking around to see who else. Um, but anyway, as we, and my second book comes out here at the end of April. So um, some of us are getting published, but there's a lot of new folks in there. Did you have a particular way that you sorted your, Judith is published. Did you have a particular way that you sorted your notes or, um, you know, how, how did you decide like, oh, this would go great 
earlier in the book, or this story would be better over here. Did you have any type of, of a, a, a platform that you used, an app that you used, or are you just plain old pencil and paper like some of us? <laughs> so I, I started out pretty simplistically in Word, typing away, um, keeping chapters. Sometimes I was writing the end of the book. Sometimes I was writing the middle of the book. And as you know, if you, you've written or you published, there's a lot of rewrites and you read through it almost enough to make yourself crazy and say, you know what, I think this actually makes sense here or here. So it's a lot of kind of moving things around. But uh, what I did end up using is Readsy, which for those of you who don't know, is a great free platform. You can create books. They have uh, spots in there where you can um, write notes for your book or do layouts for your book, uh, depending on, you know, what you want to do. But it, it's a really helpful platform I found. And that's what I ended up using. Okay. And it's just a free app. Uh, yeah, it's it's a free app. And what's great about Readsy as well is it will connect you to editors, um, artists, that kind of thing. So it, there's okay. a lot that you can do on that. Yep. Okay. Now I'm I'm a little bit not quite as advanced as, as Harmony is. I'm I'm just using uh, Trello. Linda wants to know how you spell that. So Harmony, I'll let you put that yep. in the chat and make sure you have the, the button to click to everyone there so everyone sees it. Um, and then capture that. You can either do a screen print or copy and paste it over, you know, into your notes or whatever you want to do there for folks that are listening. Um, but I use Trello, a Trello board. And all Trello is, it's an electronic uh, bulletin board. You know, the old fashioned, put the bulletin board on the wall. And and for those of you that are old school and you go, oh, I don't want to do any of those apps. I don't want to do it on the computer. I'm just a paper and pencil. Uh, there's there's nothing wrong with just putting the bulletin board on the wall above your desk or your writing desk and, and using post-it notes. And every time, uh, you know, you come up with a storyline or whatever, put it on a post-it note and stick it up on your bulletin board and you can start creating your chapters across your bulletin board. And then you can move your post-it notes around, say, oh, this would work better here. But And all Trello is, is an electronic bulletin board. So there's a million and one ways to keep track of your writing. Um, but I'm here to tell you, just get started, whatever it is that you're doing. Now, Harmony, how did you come up with the title? You said as, as you were taking notes uh, in your phone for about a year before you started writing even different titles. Um, how did you come up? How did you finally settle on the title that you have? Yeah. Um, so in the beginning of the book, I, I talk about all the various places that I lived. I lived in more than 40 houses. and um, due to my father having a mental illness. And so we moved around a lot. And I had an epiphany when I was a child, we lived in beautiful houses. And I thought about that and how there was so much chaos going inside. So the beautiful houses or all the pretty houses hid the chaos that was happening inside those homes. When you look at houses, you don't know what's going on inside them. and for me, it kind of hid behind in the walls. And so I thought, what a great title for the book. And then the chapters are laid out by some of those houses that I lived in. Um, for instance, one of the chapters is called um, the truck camper. We lived in the back of a truck camper at one point. Now that wasn't, that wasn't a pretty house, but um, so that is how I came up with the title for it, all the pretty houses. Wow. You know what? Um, I, I remember early on, I think we all, you know, have stories in our past. And uh, and and for those of you that know my background, where I was working two minimum wage jobs and I was a single mom and, you know, there's there's all the stories that go with that. Um, but I can remember driving home late from my second job. And I remember uh, driving down the street, you know, coming home and I would see the lights on in all the houses. And I remember thinking, I wish I had a house like that. I wish I had a home like that. But the realization is, is you don't know everything that's going on behind those windows in, uh, in those, those beautiful homes that you're, you're wishing that you had one like that. Um, and, and again, I, I love your title because it just speaks volumes. I think we all know of someone or even our own story where it it does look 
like it's beautiful on the outside, but maybe not so beautiful on the inside. So I love that. Um, Harmony is saying that the readsy.com, it's not an app, it's an actual website. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So for those of you that are looking for the readsy, it's R E E D S Y.com and it is a website. Okay. So perfect for that. Um, is there something about your book that people would be surprised to find out, Harmony? There's probably a lot of surprising things in the book, which you have to read it to find them all. Um, <laughs> okay, <laughs> so everybody mark it down, All the Pretty Houses by Harmony Lovin. So make sure you you check out a copy. Go ahead, Harmony. I, I was just going to say, aside from, uh, you know, living in a multitude of houses, um, I think probably one of the surprising factors may be what you come to find out about your own ambiguous loss and how you can uh, move through it. Now, again, we've got several that are writing their uh, their memoirs in the, in the group, uh, just from me looking at, at the folks that are with us today. Um, how did you choose what to include or what to exclude about your life? And what about, um, how about some of those stories that, your truth would maybe throw someone under the bus. How did you handle that in your writing? Yeah. That's always the biggest question when writing a memoir is, is, you know, I don't want to throw uncle Joe under the bus, but you know, so how, how do you, how do you maneuver that? That's a great question. So it, one of the things that I thought about in including um, certain things, and I'm going to, I'm going to answer the last part of your, your question first um, one is for anyone I mentioned by name, I got their approval. Um, so that was a big thing. And then uh, certain things that happened, um, a lot of times I changed looks, names, that kind of thing, um, to, to, um, shelter that person. Um, and then there were things that I did ultimately end up leaving out of the book because you can't just go throw people under the bus and you're writing it from your perspective. And there's an old saying that, you know, there's three sides to every story, yours, mine, and the truth. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a hard one. Um, as far as what I included, I tried to do three things. The first thing was to either make my, my story that I'm relaying either about the ambiguous loss that I experienced or about what it was that I did to move through that loss. And then I also went back and read the book several times as a reader. And I wanted to make sure that the reader was going to feel engaged. I gave my manuscript rough drafts a lot of times to a couple friends and family members and said, give me your feedback. And I think that was really helpful too because sometimes we get so involved in our story we miss things that are obvious to a reader, like, hey, you say this, but then you, you know, you call it a coat, but then you say it's a jacket. So which one is it? Um, so I, you definitely want to look at it from a reader's perspective as well and say, is this engaging? Uh, because it's one thing when it's your story, it's another thing to get a reader wanting to read the next chapter. Well, I, I get that. That's that's so pertinent to everything that we're talking about. But let's circle back just quickly to the fact that you had some folks read your story to give you some feedback. Um, our topic for today, um, as far as as a lesson for all of us that are, are wannabe writers or authors or wherever we are in the process, is how do you go about getting involved in critique groups or... Uh, beta readers, did you have, and, and I, I know some folks, they just, it, it, it's everything from you give your manuscript to a couple of friends and say, hey, what do you think, to actually having a checklist and, and having it more systematic and giving it to a group of beta readers and saying, here, here are, these are the things I want you to, to answer in my manuscript. How technical did you get with your beta readers uh, or was it just a couple of friends? Uh, so I did both. Uh, I, I think it's good feedback to get from people who know you. It's also great feedback to get from people who don't know you. One of the things that I did, and as you were asking the question, I was trying to think of the website, which I may have to email to you later, but there is a website that you can go to and you can release free copies 
to beta readers who can either get that as an ebook or as a print book. It is free to use and they will come back and they can give you reviews or critiques. So that was something that I used and I also found that to be very helpful. So once you get this feedback coming back to you, how much of it did you actually implement into your writing? Did, did, it, did your writing change a lot after that? My writing did not change a lot. Um, luckily for me, I got some really good feedback. Uh, there were some, some things that were critiqued. Um, some of them I went back and changed and thought, you know what, that, that's a good point. Maybe I need to move that here. Or maybe I don't really need that as a relevant part. Maybe it felt relevant to me as a writer, but as a reader, maybe not so much. Um, and then there were some things that I was just adamant that I'm like, I don't care if you like it. I want to leave that in there. <laughs> that's how I want to say it. That's how I'm going to say it. Um, so I think that as with a lot of things, you can take it with a grain of salt. Um, I will say when I got to the point where I was working with my editor and he was giving me feedback, um, that was really helpful too, because there were some things again, that I was very adamant that I wanted to, to leave in there. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there were other, you know, uh, suggestions that he made that I thought as a professional editor who reads, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of books um, that were uh, great choices to make. And sometimes it was just, hey, I think you should switch out this word. Um, maybe a reader is not going to necessarily want to Google what that means or, you know, so so those were really good combined things to do. And I I would highly recommend doing a multitude of different ones as far as friends and family and then also beta and uh, so forth. I love that. Um, and again, I'm such a new writer as uh, being published. I've been writing forever, but for actually getting published that when my editor says, you know, uh, let's consider this, I always go, okay, <laughs> let's consider that because I know they've read a lot more manuscripts and they have a much bigger picture as to what the reader uh, really wants to read or or how it flows, that sort of thing. And so I almost always, uh, and again, like I have a lot of experience, I'm on book number two. It's not like I'm on book number 10, <laughs> but in my limited experience, um, I've dis discovered that the editor is usually correct. So um, I love that. I love that. Um, now I have a, a message here from Mandy. It says, what was the name of the online group you used again, Harmony, the one for uh, the beta readers? Yeah, I actually just uh, responded to that chat. I oh, don't okay. recall off the top of my head. I will have to send it to you okay. and then let you uh, use the powers that be to shoot that out. <laughs> yes, yes. I once Harmony gives me that I will put it in the description of this replay. And so all of you can simply go to kathybenner.com, uh, scroll over to the authors uh, and writers, and then go to the 2024 replays. And when you replay this video, I'll put that in the description once uh, Harmony sends it over to me. Harmony, what makes your biography different from others that's on the market? Well, I think the biggest difference is that there's a lot of books out there about mental health, some about mental illness. Um, in my book, I found that I had a responsibility for a call to action um, in certain situations uh, uh, without getting too, too much into detail. For me, I felt that um, there are so many things that we can be doing to help kids who have mental illnesses. And I think that that in part is what makes my book different from others on the market. It is not just a whimsical journey through pretty houses. It is, um, you know, a story that kind of paints a picture of what it's like to be a caretaker of someone who has a mental illness, as well as a child of someone who had a mental illness. And you know what, it affects all of us. And, and for those of you that are on the call and listening, you may not know this about me, but we lost Mark's son to suicide a few years ago. And so, um, you know, this story kind of hits home for me, Harmony. So my heart goes out to you. I understand uh, the grieving that goes with losing a child. Um, I see what it's done to the folks that are left behind. And, uh, and it, so there's, there's a lot of healing that needs to go on. Uh, 
you know, before, after, and all around a situation like that. So I, I, it certainly hits home and all of us probably know someone that has had a, a mental illness situation in the family, if not in your immediate family, you know, someone who has, and so your work is so powerful. And I really appreciate yeah. that, that you, and, and I'll, I'll say, you'll have to tell me if I'm wrong, but I appreciate that you pushed through, am I right? And, and was able to publish this work because it I is. Did. Actually, um, I, I will say my book was with my publisher or my editor, I'm uh, sorry, last year uh, when my son died, it'll be a year in April. And um, so having to go and finish a book, that was about it as I was grieving uh, was probably one probably the most difficult thing of my life. So thank you. I appreciate that. That was uh, definitely a hard thing to do, but thank you. Judith already bought your book. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> I love it. Judith, thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Now, what inspires you as, as a writer? This was a biography. Are Are you are you writing other material now? Or are you are, are are you saying, okay, I am now published. I'm a writer and I'm going to write. Yeah. Um, so I, I feel like I've been a writer my whole life. I started out writing songs when I was 10. And uh, I think I've just kind of followed that journey along uh, into writing books. I am writing uh, two other books right now. One is a uh, fiction book, actually. And um, it's called The People You Leave Behind. So it's about a woman and it's a mystery. So I'll just leave it at that. Um, I am hoping to get that published this year. And then uh, I am on a long journey to write another book. It is going to be a nonfiction book about finding your joy um, after the loss of, uh, from someone to suicide. Uh, so I am on the cusp of kind of writing that. But, um, you know, you got to take that a day at a time. And, you know, uh, the beginning of your question was what inspires me to write everything everything mm -hmm. I uh I sometimes it's the stupid simple things like I've mm -hmm. recently taken up baking for some reason and I was like oh you know I could I could write about baking not that I would necessarily <laughs> like here's how you make a cake um but I think I think and I, I think and I hear I, a blog in there somewhere yeah, I think you can yeah. start a blog series <laughs> yeah I I definitely and I thought about that too in writing about travel which has been done but you know mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of ways to be inspired I I say in my book beauty is everywhere if you just open your eyes and I think that creativity and writing is everywhere as writers as creative people if we look around us and just take those moments every day to feel inspired. Well, talking about creativity, can you describe your writing as a particular style? I don't know that I have a particular style. I, as far as all the pretty houses, I think I would describe it one as raw. You have to be, you know, emotionally willing to put it out there. Um, but I also think it's very introspective. Um, it's a it's a fine balance between throwing it out there and kind of reeling it back in. Um, so, yeah, I don't know that I have a particular writing style. I and I say that just because that's a memoir and mm -hmm. uh, not just you know a, a, a fiction. Okay, let's open it up to questions. I know we've covered a lot of territory and uh, Harmony, gosh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, again, writing um, writing a book like, like All the Pretty Houses, I know had to be kind of tough to get through that and especially after losing your son. Um, and so what type of questions do we have? Shelby says, I volunteer with Lost Community Services. It's a group in Columbus for folks grieving the loss of loved ones to suicide. She said, everyone knows someone. Yeah, I get that. So yes. And she put the website there if you're interested. Yeah. Um, I'll start off. My first question, Harmony, is um, do you have a pattern or um, a time of day, a, a, a particular writing closet i mean how do you sit down to actually do the writing yeah um i'm 
I'm big on notes. And again, I keep a lot of thoughts. I think um, sometimes, you know, you're out for a walk or whatever, and typically all of us have our phones with us. So I like to keep notes in my phone. And then once I feel like I, I could kind of combine that together, or I have an idea of where I want to take it, I sit down and write. I do try and block out time every day to write. And sometimes okay. that's only 30 minutes, if that's what I've got. Um, sometimes that uh, I'll get on a roll and it might be five hours. Um, but I always try and write at least once a day, even if it's in notes, uh, even if I can elaborate on a thought. So I think that's a big thing is to try and find time every day to write something, because I think that also helps to keep your creativity flowing. Um, and sometimes we get to those days where we're like, I, I don't feel creative mm -hmm. at all. You can go back through those notes and say, oh yes, I do. I wanna write about this, or I remembered, I felt like that, so. Mm -hmm. Do you have a time of day? Um, Time of day is usually about mid afternoon. Okay. I, I like about 2 p.m. to write. I'm an early morning. I like I like to get up. I run it up for those of you that know me. I run a guest house in my home, uh, like a little bed and breakfast. And so I like to get up before anybody else gets up and I can write for an hour each morning uh, before my my world gets crazy. So <laughs> uh, anyone else a question or um, anyone else want to share your favorite writing time of day or uh, a way that you get your writing done? I know we've got some authors in the group. Sandy, how about you? You're, you've authored a couple of books. Do you have a particular time of day or system that you use in getting your writing done? You know, it's, it's interesting. I do very well with somebody else's deadline. So with those <laughs> two books I published, I was hired to write them. So when they said your deadline is in three months, by golly, I met it. <laughs> on my own, not always so much, but there's a small writer's group, uh, an offshoot of the writer's workshop I do. And they, I'm kind of spearheading these two right, young writers. And yeah, I have to show up. <laughs> so our writing deadline is, is Wednesday. I thought, well, what have you done? And you're not going to want to be the bad girl and not get your homework done. So that really propels me. But I'm driven by what everybody else wants me to do for them first. So I'm with you. I love mornings. I get more done before noon mm -hmm. than any other time of the day. But if I get all those folks off my to-do list by about one or two o'clock, now I'm ready for some me time where I, I could do it, I guess, in a sense, less guilty. But that's that's kind of how it goes. Well, Sandy, you know my motto. There's nothing like a good, healthy deadline. So, <laughs> and so uh, what I what I do is I'm I'm horse writing modules. So I'm I'm writing uh, every every week, um, and I'm writing modules for the academy as well as writing blog posts as well as um, again my second book. It's a collaborative effort, and it's getting published as well as I'm working on a fiction novel. And so again, I like that first hour of the morning for me. Um, but as t speaking to Sandy, having the he good, healthy deadline is um, whatever topic I'm teaching that week, I know that that I'm going to be mentally in that topic space. And so yeah. that's the week that I write the module to go with the class to go with, you know, because I'm already in that mind space of that topic. And so the blog, the module, the social media post, it all goes with that topic. So that's again. It's a good, healthy deadline because I know that's the week that we're going to be on this call. So, so yeah. that's what helps me is having that same good, healthy deadline. Anyone yeah. else? I know we've got some other authors in the group. Um, I want to ask Sally. Sally does blogging and Sally, how, how, did, what is your favorite writing time and how do you share with the folks how you stay on track for your blog? Uh, well, I don't. So, <laughs> But when I do, Sally gets crazy busy with the travel stuff. Her yeah. life is uh, is like all or nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when I do, it's I tend to write a blog in Word, like maybe a Sunday afternoon, and then um, mornings are my best time to do things. But Sunday afternoon is pretty quiet, and then I go over it, and then I usually post it on a Wednesday. Okay. So I give it time to percolate a little bit. Mm -hmm. I, I call that letting it get cold. 
sometimes yeah. when you write, you can't you can't see the forest for the trees. And if you write and publish all in one fell swoop, uh, you go back later and go, ooh, I should have cleaned that up a little bit more. So I like to let yeah. my writing get cold, just like Sally's talking about. Uh, let a day go by in there and then go back and read it as a reader. And uh, and then anything that needs to be changed kind of jumps off the page at you that way. So yeah, I appreciate that. Sally, that's that's a great uh, plan. And that keeps you writing every week that way. Um, Sylvia posted that she's trying to figure out how to develop a regular writing habit. Um, Sylvia, I don't know. Share with us. What are you struggling with? We'll see if she unmutes there. So to, to reflect on what Sylvia is saying is uh, I, I run by the calendar and because everything I do is by the calendar, you know, I have to, uh, you know, I, I have a call at a certain time. I have to be somewhere. I have guests checking in on certain dates. And so for me, it helps just putting it on the calendar. That's what works for me. Sylvia is unmuted now. Sylvia, uh, share with us um, what what is it you're struggling with about developing a regular writing habit? Uh, I'm not sure why I can't. Um, I mean, I can think of a lot of reasons, but none of them seem to be the reason. Mm -hmm. I don't. So well, I don't really know what I need to do. Well, um, you know, it's possible. I found that what really gets me wanting to get back into that chair it, and write is when I get involved in the story. And it's like when you're reading a good book and you want to go back and finish it. I love, they're not always that often, but I love those moments because it's like, I can say mentally no to everybody else and sit down and get that work done. And sometimes, uh, you know, you and you'll hear writers talk about they do just about everything. There's somebody who can't write anywhere. But when they're sitting in a cafe in a Starbucks or in a Panera Bread. So I don't know, you know, make it your fun mission to figure out, I don't know, let me try that. I'm going to go take my writing stuff and I'm going to go sit in a Starbucks. Or, and if that doesn't work, doesn't always work for me because I'm very distracted, like, ooh, pretty purse. Or, wow, look at that. Well, that <laughs> smells delicious. And that's miles away from where I'm, I'm going. The other thing is time. If I can stay in my chair, I will set an alarm clock and I will stay in my chair. If I'm there after 20 minutes, I'm in for good. It's almost like, again, it's that transition of, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. Oh, look, pretty cat. All those sorts of things. But if I, I could tell, oh, come on, Kachurik, I could sit here for 20 minutes and then I forget that I you know that timer's on and I'm in the story and the time is easier to fill with my own words and try a prompt maybe you just need a little little like piece of candy dangling out there look up online or or ask them like give me a prompt and they'll they'll give you boy that was the dumbest decision I ever made and then take it from there and see where to get you so and those are some options. Now, what I've discovered, Sandy, and thank you for all that, but what I've discovered is uh, if I have a particular place in my house that I do my writing, then mm -hmm. it's like after a while, um, the cellular memory, memory kind of takes over. And as soon as my body sits down in that place, it's like I know it's time to write and I can actually close that gap of sitting down and writing a little faster. And so now, since I've been practicing that for some time, now when I make the decision and I look at my calendar and it's like mm -hmm. time to go sit there, I'm yeah. already writing in my head before. I can't wait to get into the chair so I can get it down yeah. on paper. So um, that does help. Um, yeah. if you have a particular place and time. So um, maybe that'll work for you. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, Mandy yeah. says, any tips for making time for writing when you're working and you have young kids? Boy, that's a tough one because time is not in your corner. <laughs> when you're working a full-time job and you have young kids, um, it's almost going to have to be um, an early morning before work, before kids, or 
after bedtime. If your kids are young enough and uh, they have somewhat of an earlier bedtime, maybe getting in a half an hour after you put the kids to bed before it's your bedtime might be the best. I don't know. It's whatever works for you. But that's a tough one, Mandy. Any any tips there from anyone else that has young kids and are trying to squeeze in some writing? I don't know. Yeah, that's a tough one. Sherry had yeah. to jump off. She had to get back to work. Um, Elise says she's been trying uh, voice notes to catch those thoughts while she's working. Elise, share with us, what is voice notes? Hi, everybody. Oh, here, let me see. Cut this on. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hi. hi, Elise. I, uh, I have been thinking, uh, so I use something similar to Trello. It's called ClickUp. It is an app. It's also kind of online. It's a task management service. They have a free forever version. But one thing, it's like, it's where I have my entire life. I have little sections for each, each like thing that I'm working on for work, for writing. And then as I'm working on a story or so, if I have, just like Kathy was saying with Trello, like the board, a specific chapter or something, a prompt, whatever, I'll go into that task. And I can just hit the voice note button and whatever that prompt is, I can just kind of start speaking to it. I can just kind of start just talking. And as the thoughts come out and as I'm able to kind of follow that thought pattern, I have that recorded now. And I might be in the car, I might be out at the grocery store. And I'm like, oh my goodness, this would make per perfect for this chapter or this section. And I'm just talking about it. So it feels more natural than me having to be in an exact spot because I'm one of those people where I could just like San Sandy was saying like oh pretty cat oh pretty item like you know but I can kind of catch it and I might hear myself say pretty cat and it might be something to go in the story you know so yeah, yeah. cool I love that I love that and now you say it's an app and what is it called again click up c-l-i-c-k-u-p mm -hmm. click up spell mm -hmm. just the way it sounds click up Mm -hmm. So anybody that wants to check that out, um, anyone else want to share about writing styles or? Well, we're, I don't know where you are, Elise, but I know uh, there's a, a mystery writer who's written several books and she's written every one of them sitting in her car. So uh, her house was just so busy that she would excuse herself and like say she was going to the grocery store but she ended up sitting in the Kroger parking lot for like 45 minutes working on her writing and then go to the grocery store. So, and then, you know, it, go ahead. That is a great idea, Sandy. I, I like that because I was sharing uh, with Debbie one time, Debbie's on the call with us today, Debbie Marks. Um, I was sharing with Debbie when she said, well, her house sometimes gets so busy. I said, you know, we'll go out to a coffee shop. But again, then like Sandy was sharing, you've got the noises and the people and the lady with the pretty purse. And, you know, so there are some distractions there as well. Uh, but yeah, I like the idea of being in the car. Um, I am an avid reader and there are times that I'm in my car just getting my errands done and um, and I'll stop to get some lunch and I decide, oh, I'm going to just read a couple chapters. Next thing you know, I'm there 45 minutes. I'm still reading and I'm like, oh, holy moly, I got to get on with my day. But um, yeah, it is a nice way to eliminate all those distractions. So anyone else? I know Ruth has a published book out there. Uh, Ruth, would you like to share? How did you get your writing done for some of the newbies in the group? How did you manage to find time to write and uh, around with everything else that's going on in your world? We'll give Ruth a, a chance to unmute if she's at a place where she can. And again, I don't know what everybody's doing. Uh, see if Ruth can unmute. Uh, there she is. I can unmute. I don't know if I can change my, get my camera on. But oh, yeah, you're it's good. Because, uh, but anyway, yes, I wrote my book while I was working full time. Wow. Uh, but I didn't have young kids. Mm -hmm. The kids were out of the house. And so that makes a big difference. But I remember Sunday afternoons, uh, occasionally in the evening, if I had the energy, but yeah. Yep. It took several years. But I also realized I needed to do some growing during that time, too. I I, I hear that. So number one, uh, I hear a lot of folks say that it takes, uh, you know, oh, I've been working on this book for years. And uh, and number two, sometimes we do have to grow into our story and and what it is that we're trying to accomplish. 
for a lot of us as writers, we're not um, hired. I don't know when I watch these movies or more, not necessarily the movies, because sometimes they're adapted after a book. But when you see a series where there there's actual writers that are writing these storylines for these series, you know, they're they're under the gun. They're like, OK, you got to have another episode by Friday. I don't know. I honestly don't know how you can stay that focused and keep all the storylines, because oftentimes in these series, there's like 15 storylines going on at the same time. I don't know how you keep all of it straight because your readers and your viewers are not dumb. They will catch you up on some of that stuff. You know, you can't say that Joey had blue eyes in chapter two and he's got green eyes in chapter 10. Uh, they'll, they'll catch that. So uh, I don't know how some folks can, can do that. That's been the hard part for me is making sure that I have, and again, that's editors can help catch that, but I'd like to make sure that I have my story as polished as possible before it goes off to, to an editor. Um, Ruth, um, you have your hand up, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I think as far as the TV series and stuff, my husband, I'm not a big TV watcher, but he said all the writers went on strike last year and they that's why there weren't any the new shows. Era. Yeah. And so those are professionals. And I mm -hmm. do think that the more we hone our scales, like Sandy does this more than some of the rest of us, uh, that you do get where you can watch those things. And it's that 10,000 hours that Malcolm Gladwell talks about. You just do it automatically. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And for those of you that don't know what Ruth is referring to, it's it's that once you do something for that number of hours, you're you're pretty proficient. <laughs> and so the more you write, the better you write. And the better you write, the more you write. And so it just, it's its kind of that perfect circle. So um, Harmony, how can folks get in touch with you if they want to connect with you or if they want you on their podcast or as a speaker or they want to buy your book? Um, do you have a website where folks can connect? Uh, currently, my website is down, um, but it's HarmonyLovin.com. Um, otherwise, they can email me at theharmony11 at gmail.com. Um, as far as buying my book, it's available everywhere books are sold. Um, so Amazon, uh, Barnes & Noble, Google, um, pretty much everywhere uh, <laughs> that you can buy a book. All the Pretty Houses is um, there. So, Okay, I love that. I love that. Anyone have any final question for Harmony? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing um, the call, the screen, uh, stop recording, I mean. And um, and then if anybody wants to stay on a little longer, if you have some questions, and I would be happy to show you my Trello board. That might be helpful for some of you that are wanting to get started and you just can't quite wrap your mind around what that looks like. So any last questions for Harmony? And Harmony, if you would put your email, since your website is down, put that in the chat for everyone uh, so that folks can get in touch with you. And also for all the folks that we interview on any of our calls, we give you a free gift by putting you in our speaker's cabinet. So Harmony, I will add you to our speaker's cabinet and hopefully uh, you can maybe pick up some uh, some interviews there as well. So any any calls or any questions for Harmony? You have a beautiful name, by the way. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. I love it. Hey, okay, wanna, so. Yep. I just want to thank Judy Shaw real quick. She sent me an email with interest in Into the Springs. And, you know, it's like a book. You don't know just how good it is until someone comes up to you and says, wow, I really like that. So thank you very much. Yes. And if you haven't been again to a writer's uh, conference or a writer's workshop, look for one in your area. If you're close to uh, Sandy, definitely attend hers. It's the first weekend in August. I'm going to be there. Wouldn't miss it. It's my 50th year class reunion too, Sandy. So I'm going to sneak away for a couple of hours to uh, <laughs> to go to my class reunion and then I'm coming back. <laughs> so I'm going to drive back to my, I'm going to go back and forth on Saturday night. But uh, again, I didn't want to miss the conference. And so I'll be there. Uh, so uh, Linda said she wants to see the Trello board. Anyone else wants to see, just hang on and don't go away. 